Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Hey friends, today I want to talk to you about goals <laughs> and the word goals, even the word itself, goals might be like, oh, cringe. Oh, I don't like goals, right? Goals has like a big masculine energy to it, right? And I want to talk to you about how to create heart-centered goals, heart-centered intentions, as I call them, in a way that feels really good and really the importance of goals and intentions in making more money, signing more clients, you know, having a better, happier life, meeting your personal goals. Um, I use affirmations a lot of times with my goals, but I want to talk to you about a conversation I've had with several of my coaching clients this week, and I think that it'll be so helpful to you. Um, so let's just dive right in. I pulled up the exact quote because whenever I say this to my clients, I say it wrong, right? But you guys know this quote, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. I'm so sorry to all the clients that I've quoted that wrong to or like shoot for the stars, shoot for the planets, right? But you know the point of this quote, right? Shoot high. And even if you don't make it, you're still good to go. You're still among the beautiful stars. This is exactly how I see goals, right? If you're type A, by the way, when I used to do life coaching, I led a workshop one time that was called type A to type A minus. I thought that was real clever. I was really proud of it. I was like hanging my posters, right? But really, it's just remembering, like, if you're type A like me, you can be like, what, Anna? No, the point of a goal is to make it. And if you don't make your goal, that means that you failed. There's something wrong with you. You're an unworthy human. You better, like, you know, go recover for three months. Oh, my Lance, right? I've been there. I get it. But I need you to start thinking about goals differently because that's what's holding you up, right? So this may blow your mind. Are you ready? The point of goals isn't to hit them. The point of goals is not to hit your goal. You're like, what? The point of your goal is to help you reach and stretch further than you ever would have without it, right? And some of you listening have been sitting, have been setting safe goals in your life, whether it's in your business or your life, you've been setting safe goals because of what you make it mean when you don't hit your goal. Therefore, you're not growing as rapidly as you as you could be, right? I talked to several people in their business when they're already making six figures, right? Clients of mine, and I find a lot of what they start experiencing is boredom, right? Boredom. Maybe you're in your day job and you're making a ton of money and you're starting to feel bored. Maybe you're in your business and you've already grown to six figures and you're looking to scale to the next level and you're starting to feel bored, right? A lot of times this can happen because we are not number one. I mean, don't get me started, but like we're not clear on our desires. We don't give ourselves time to like brain dump what we actually want, let alone give ourselves permission to, you know, release the fears around it or start doing our desires. Okay, back to this though. So it's so important that you realize the, that the, the point of goals is not to hit them, but to stretch into them. And it may shock you. It always shocks my clients when I tell them this, but I don't hit most of my goals, you guys. Most of the goals I set in my business, I do not hit. However, I have grown my business year after year. My programs, my income keeps expanding, because I set these really audacious goals. If I were to set these really realistic and save goals, I wouldn't be growing my business. I would be plateauing, right? And so like, for example, like, let's say I'm coaching you for a minute, right? And I'm like, okay, beautiful. You want to grow your email list. How many people do you want to grow your email list by? And you're like, uh, maybe this summer I want to grow it by a hundred people. Right. And I'm like, how about a thousand? And they're like, wait, what? 
no, I can't do a thousand. But then when they're like, well, maybe I guess I could do a thousand if I did X, Y, Z. And like, do you see how their brain already starts to turn? That's the whole point of a big goal is you realize, oh, if I want to double what I'm saying that I want, I'm going to have to show up with a completely different energy, a completely different strategy, completely different confidence. Those are the actions, right? And so maybe you won't hit your goal of a thousand, but maybe you'll get 550 people instead of 80 if you shoot for 100 people. Does that make sense? And so it's just remembering the importance of big goals and not so much that they're debilitating, right? You have to know yourself. One of the people in Sell With Heart made a great point and she was like, Anna, I like to do good, better, best goals, right? I like to do um, like the the goal. I like to do a better goal. And then I like to do like a stretch goal, right? I actually have several clients that do this. And so you know you and your personality best. And obviously we don't want to set a goal so big that it feels debilitating or impossible. We want it to feel possible. However, we do want it to feel like a stretch because it's only in that stretch that you reach and you grow and you innovate, If it's not a stretch, you won't innovate. And as a CEO of your business, your biggest, one of your biggest assets is the ability to do things differently than you've done them before, to do things differently than has been done in your industry, right? And you're not going to do that if you set a safe goal, right? You're just going to do what you've always done. And so that is why I always set crazy goals in my business, wild goals in my business, because it causes me to stretch. And what I do, of course, sometimes when I don't hit a goal, I'm like a little disappointed, but like 10 minutes disappointed. I think some of you, when you don't hit your goals, you let it debilitate you and you let it take you off track for three months. And I'm saying this with love. I'm saying this with love, right? I get it. But you have to stop making not hit your goals mean something. And you know that I talk about not just celebrating, um, like hitting the goal, but celebrating the steps to the goal. I think this can help too, right? When we stop putting so much of our eggs in the basket of the end result, and we start putting more of our self kudos and pride in the actions we take, right? I show up on a Facebook live, even before, if I know it converted or not, I'm like, dang, I did good on that Facebook live. Wow. Like, are you celebrating those actions more than you are the end, right? Because we have, I mean, we have a, I feel like we don't have as much control of the outcome, right? There's so many factors. Like, let's say I set like this big launch goal for my group program. Of course, I have something to do with it because I'm showing up and sending the emails and hopping on live and recording the podcast. But there's a lot of things I don't know, right? Like what about the social media algorithms? What about people's, you know, personal lives? What's going on for them? And so I feel like when, you know, something like, let's say you set a goal and you don't hit it or you quote fail at the goal, we just don't always know why, right? Of course we can shift and troubleshoot, but I think what a lot of you are doing, I'm just saying this with all the love, right? You don't meet a goal and then you spend three months um, spinning and troubleshooting before you get back up, get back on the horse. Instead of for me, I spend like one day pouting, like, dang it, I didn't meet the goal. Okay, what's next? What did I learn, right? After my launches, I always fill out and my team fills out the short little four question questionnaire. And we ask ourselves, what went well, what didn't go good. So I am all for like assessing, right? Same thing I have my clients do every quarter, a CEO assessment where they're asking themselves what's working and what's not working, you know, I think it is important to not just be all like sunshine and butterflies, but to actually get clear on, okay, what actually isn't working though, so I can fix the problem. So I'm not saying to be blind to the problem. Sure, reflect what didn't work. What do I need to fix? But what I'm saying is don't spend three months on what didn't work, right? Get back out there and keep going and set another goal. And would you celebrate for a minute the audacity with which you showed up for that goal? (laughs) <laughs> and if you do that, the next is going to be so much easier, right? Can you give yourself credit for what you did do, right? Um, because there has been times when like I've kind of like given something not a full effort and I've surpassed my goal. And there's been other times where I have shown up like full in, full out and not hit my goal. Do you know what I'm saying? And so I just think we are using the wrong metric if we're doing the goal being met or not. And instead we need to do the metric of like, how did I show up? You know, and of course, I get that it feels rewarding when we meet our goals. I get that, right? But I just think we need to put a little bit less weight on it. I want you to answer this question. What do you make it mean when you don't hit your goal? 
What do you make it mean when you don't hit your goal? Typically, my clients say something like, oh, I failed, right? I could do a whole other podcast on failure. It could mean there's something wrong with me, right? That I'm not enough, right? That this is foretelling of my future goals, right? That the thing that I accomplished last month, because I couldn't accomplish it this month, that it's a fluke, right? That, you know, what I planned, because this failed, the next thing I planned is going to fail, right? We make it mean so many things. And almost, we almost put too much weight on the success, right? Where it's like, I almost caution you not to be like too excited about the success. Like when you meet your goal, we also don't want to make it mean that we're automatically going to meet next month's goal, right? And so really start to ask yourself, like, what am I making it mean? I'll just be quiet for a second so you can think too to yourself as you're driving in your car, doing your dishes, what do you make it mean? Or think about in the last year, a goal that you didn't hit. Cause if, I mean, you can't be in business for a year and, and hit every one of your goals. Like I know in the last year, there's a goal that you didn't hit, right? What did you make that mean when you didn't hit it? just important to reflect on, right? Because if we can negate that, right? Or if we can do, you know, as Lorraine said in her beautiful, one of my clients, Lorraine did an interview here on the podcast and I love how she framed limiting beliefs. And she said, um, create a counter argument to it, right? But however you like to process through your limiting beliefs, how can you surrender it so that you can put yourself to the possibility that my ability to meet goals or not meet goals says nothing about my worthiness as a human being, right? I did a Facebook Live early, early on in my business where I said, you know, whether you have an audience of 10 or 100,000, that does not change your ability to do whatever you do. Maybe you're an accountant, maybe you're a website designer, maybe you're a coach, right? Your business failure or succeeding says nothing about your ability to be an accountant, to be an excellent coach, right? Of course, like we grow experience over time, but I think so often we make it mean something about us that doesn't. And the truth is like our society is so like achievement driven. And I just think we need to detach a little bit from that. You are a worthy, incredible human being even without, with or without goals. That's not why we set goals. We don't set goals to be worthy. We don't set goals to feel good enough. We already are good enough with goals or without goals, right? And so just remember the point of goals is to not to like build our self-esteem, heck to the no, right? The point of goals is to <laughs> innovate in your business. Really, that's the point, right? To stretch yourself further, to think creatively, to get outside the box, to be more visible, to be braver, to be more courageous. Like that's the point of goals. It's really not to hit them. The point of goals is not to hit them, okay? So here's your takeaway today. <laughs> Number one, to set goals. Some of you may be like, Anna, I, I'm even shocked I got through this podcast episode because I don't even like to set a goal, right? Number one, can you give yourself permission to even set a goal, to set an intention, right? A huge reason why I think goals are powerful too is because we could do so many things in our business all at once, but I think it's so important that we're trying to solve one main problem in our business at a time, right? Really getting clear on what is the main thing? What's the main thing I need to be doing right now? Is it growing my audience? Is it converting my current audience? Is it hiring a team member because I'm like fully booked to the brim, right? It's the, the goal is that you have one clear goal in your business. So even setting the goal in itself, what it's going to do is it's going to give you permission to not focus on all the other 7,000 things on your to-do list it helps you prioritize, right? It helps you actually make traction. So give yourself permission to set a goal. Sometimes we have to brainstorm all the goals we could have to come up with the, the one goal that feels like the most important goal for us right now. And then can you stretch yourself into what that would look like, right? If it is audience growth and normally you would settle for like a hundred or 200 new audience members, can you set it at one to 2,000? right? If your goal for your next group program is normally, you know, I want to fill it with 10 people. What would it look like to fill it with 30 people, right? Can you start to stretch yourself into that, knowing that the win is going to be the energy and the excitement and the intention you put behind it and not the, um, the end result, 
right? The goal, right, is really to, be, you know, it's like kind of like in running, I'm not a huge runner, <laughs> but like to beat your own personal record, right? If you, to, to get more people onto your list, to get more people in this round of your group launch than you got in your last round of your group launch, right? You're just going for a PR, for a personal record. Is that what it stands for? Um, and you're going to do that. You're going to be able to PR when you set your goals bigger and brighter um, and stretchier, like stretch. Can you trust that you stretch? And if you feel like you aren't able to stretch because you feel like, Anna, I'm just surviving. I'm stretched to the brim. That's why I so recommend getting support in your business, whether it's from a coach like me. I would love to support you along the way. I do not think that you have to do these this stretching alone. No, 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 right? If you don't have a coach, I would love to support you. Um, but just looking about in general, how am I supporting myself in my life, in my business so that I can stretch? Because stretching does take capacity, right? It takes energy. It takes courage. It takes mindset work so that you don't make it mean something else, right? I actively do mindset work every day so that when I don't hit my goals, I'm really looking at the thoughts I'm telling myself around it. All of that takes time and energy and intention. Sometimes we need a coach to reframe things for us and say, hey, you didn't hit your huge goal, but look, you got, you know, this happened to a client this week. You had a bigger launch than you ever have before, right? You, you have your biggest launch ever. And she was like, oh my gosh, yes, this was my highest revenue launch ever, right? And she was disappointed because she didn't meet her enrollment goal, but she had her biggest lunch ever. And so sometimes it takes a coach, sometimes it takes support to be able to see that. And so give yourself permission to get support as you're stretching. Don't feel like you have to stretch alone, right? I even tell my like non-business girlfriends when I'm in the middle of a stretch, right? They don't ever always know what I'm talking about, but I'm like, you guys, I'm working towards this goal. Would you like hold me in your heart this next week, right? We forget to tell people to rally around us. We need community. We cannot do it alone. So feel free to reach out to me for a free clarity call. If you are looking for coaching support, I would love to match you with a program um, and my coaching that would fit best for you. But just really ask yourself in general, right? Number one, the question of like, what am I making it mean when I don't hit my goals? What do, how do I want to define goals? And what support can I wrap around me so that I can set these audacious goals in a way that feels good and supportive and sustainable, right? We want to set up what's sustainable. Okay. Thank you so much for listening along. It means the world to me. So thankful to have you here. And I just hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free. And I cannot wait to see you in there.